Hello, this is Steve with Pro Tools PC, and on this video I wanted to talk about using Pro Tools to perform a benchmark test on your system. A question we commonly get asked is, how do I compare my computer, computer A, to the performance of computer B, which may be a computer I'm looking at purchasing, a friend's computer, something like that. So I wanted to look at a way as using Pro Tools to perform a comparison benchmark test between the systems. Obviously, there's a lot of variables uh, and things we can't measure, but I just kind of wanted to look at using uh, pure horsepower, something we can measure. This is just a i7-6800K with 32 gigs of RAM. This is a pretty normal system and it's set up how we would ship a system. There's nothing fancy being done, uh, no fancy overclocking, nothing like that. In the past, around the duck and places, we used what was called the D-verb test started by Alan Halata a really long time ago. It's been due to necessity changed over time, but a common complaint was always how does 755 reverbs equate into my real world Pro Tools session. So I wanted to uh, put together something that was a little closer to what we actually do and uh, what we use. So let's open Pro Tools. The first thing we want to verify is that we are at 24 bit and 48K. And let's go ahead and name the session. And now let's check our playback engine. The first thing we want to verify is that we are set at a 64 hardware buffer. Um, be sure that uh, ignore errors is not checked. And everything else can stay how it's set, no problems. Now let's go over here to window and open up our system usage meter. Then here under view, let's make sure our track number is showing. And then let's create a stereo track. Now let's drag in about 10 minutes worth of audio onto this track. Okay, and uh, I got some audio brought into the session. Like I said, we want about roughly 10 minutes worth of audio and we want it to be fairly clean. We don't want stuff with a lot of distortion in it. So whether that's, you know, guitar, synths, um, moogs, whatever, anything like that. We want the audio to be fairly clean so we can hear any distortions, crackling, popping, anything like that when we're performing the test. Now let's go ahead and create one more stereo track. So on this track, we'll be filling up all 10 insert points on the track with a combination of Avid and Air plugins. So let's go ahead and insert those. Um, what I'm going to do is include a session file um, that will be available at our website so you can actually just download and open the session. You don't have to go through this process. So let's start with Dither, BF76, Dverb, Channel Strip, Air Kill EQ, Mod Delay 3, EQ3 7 Band, the Sansamp, Maxim, and the Master Meter. So I'm going to set up a bus off of the source track over to the track that will be recorded and duplicated. And I'm going to hit the pre button here on the send just so that if I change anything on the fader here that it won't affect the actual send. And then next let's go right in some volume automation onto this track that will be duplicated. So let's flip over to the edit window and let's change our view to volume. And then let's go up here, uh, select the pencil tool and uh, the random automation. And for this 10 minutes length, let's write in automation. And I add automation in here just to keep it kind of similar to how it is when we mix. So as I mentioned before, send one here. We'll feed the input of this track on bus one. Let's set this input to none. And this output will feed our main interface output. And on the track to be duplicated here, you can either set the output to a false output that's not going anywhere or pull the volume down. So now we're going to duplicate this track here. And on our source track here, this is the actual track that we'll be monitoring and listening to. And we'll be listening for any distortion, crackling, popping, anything like that. So let's go ahead and duplicate this track. Um, 50 might be a safe place to start for your system. 
So let's record arm everything and just hit OK through the warnings. So another thing to be aware of is just because your CPU system usage meter here is not you know, up in the red or up at 100% or something like that doesn't mean you can't have problems. I mean, you can get clicking and popping at, you know, 40, 50, 60% CPU. It's just all a matter of how, um, how stable your system is, background tasks, processes, things like that that might be running or causing issues. So I know my systems quite well. I know everything's going to be good here. So just to speed up the process, I'm going to go ahead and create some more tracks and get it closer to where I need to be. So let's go ahead and start recording. So we can see the disk usage creeping up. Uh, the CPU looks like it's fairly stabilized. Um, everything's kind of getting settled in here. Normally the UI isn't this laggy, but with the screen recording software going as well and the There's high CPU usage, it's putting a hit on the system. On the road, running from God only knows. And there's the dreaded 9173. Um, a lot of times when your CPU is sitting there right at about that 100% mark, they are guaranteed to happen. So from here, I would delete a couple tracks and try the test again. Tempting, the least I could say. I hoped I'd see you someday. Funny how life deals us hands. The one big variable in all of this from testing uh, system A to system B, something like that, is going to be your interface driver. Um, your chosen interface can make a huge difference on the amount of power uh, your system gets. So as here, you know, this system's running pretty stable at up right around 100%, and there's other interfaces that I could plug into the system that may not be able to do this at even, um, that are running down below 90%. So there is a big variable there to be aware of. It is important to be aware of running background tasks and, um, Things in the startup menu, uh, things like that that can be running. Wireless is often not looked at as a problem, but it definitely causes a large amount of DPC latency. So sometimes that's something to look at, you know, just general programs that are running that shouldn't be. On our website at protoolspc.com, I will have kind of a more detailed layout of this test, things to look for, just general more information on the test. And let's hear some feedback from you guys about how your systems test out. So thank you for watching the video and please check out our website and leave any comments, suggestions, or questions. Thank you. Mm -hmm.